Husband stole my RV by hijacking it and won't let me drive it on his solo business trip, leaving me trapped in the passenger seat. I have been writing romance novels since I was in college. I was a relatively successful author and I have made a living off selling my novels ever since. I do not make a lot of money, but I do bring home tilde $40,000 a year in book sales. This allows me to stay at home during the day so I can write and also make crafts to sell in my Etsy shop. A few years after college, I met Tim and we instantly hit it off. We dated for three years before tying the knot and we bought a house shortly after. Tim makes his living off his investments and stocks, however, we keep our finances separate. This is because Tim inherited a vast amount of money from his family and before we married, I signed a prenup agreement in order to ease his mind. We both contribute an equal share to the joint bank account for bills, then we use the remainder of our money for ourselves. About a year ago I landed a contract to write part of a romance series. The contract was huge and the payout was over $120,000 for a few months work. I contributed my share to the joint account and then put the rest of the money into the bank so I could buy an RV. I have always wanted an RV because I love to travel and nothing would make me happier than being able to write while on the road. Tim is often away on business for days at a time, so the RV would give me an opportunity to get out of the house while he is away. After six months of deciding, I chose a lightly used RV and purchased it from the owners for a great price. When Tim found out I purchased the RV, he was excited. He has a travel trailer, but it's not the same as an all-in-one RV. He loves RVs and he wanted to immediately take it out for a trip across the state. We took our trip and Tim couldn't stop talking about how much he enjoyed the experience and he started talking about taking more trips together. I gently reminded H. Him that even though the RV is a fun thing for us to have for vacations, that its main purpose is for me to have something to do while he is away for business, but that we would be taking plenty of vacations together. Tim agreed with me and he let it go for a while. The thing is, in the past few weeks, Tim has been badgering me about taking the RV with him on his business trips. He usually flies when he goes to check his rental properties slash visit family and he is normally gone for four to five days at a time. We got into an argument because he had to evict a tenant and he wanted to drive the RV across the state in order to do so. I asked him if I could come along, and Tim said he would prefer if I didn't. I then said that if I couldn't come with him, that he couldn't take my RV. I suggested that he take his travel trailer instead and he got mad and stormed out of the house. About an hour later, he started texting me like nothing had happened and then he said he was taking the RV as if our previous conversation had never happened. I called him and tried to explain that he had just purchased a brand new pickup and that if I didn't get to drive his new truck in his absence, why should he get to take my RV when I am not coming on the trip? Tim and I went back and forth and eventually he said I could come along if it meant that much to me. I said I would, and now I am regretting everything. I am sitting in the back of my own RV with a man who won't let me touch the wheel. It has been three days since this trip has started, and all Tim has done is rant about how awesome the RV trip would be if I weren't with him. It has made me question everything in our marriage, from how we split our finances to how we argue and function together. This is the first time that anything like this has ever happened and I don't know what to do in this situation. He is still ranting as I type this and he's never done that before either. Update 1 Tim had left his iPad in the back of the RV to CH. RG while he drove. I'm not proud of this, but I was able to sneak his iPad into the bedroom while he was distracted by the road. He was logged into his email account and I quickly skimmed over his inbox but didn't find anything suspicious. I then had the idea to check his sent folder and found out that he had been chatting up his ex from college. It made me sick to my stomach to read the messages, but luckily they had not yet been physical. Translated from chat speak, the message he had sent his ex was basically, I can't wait to get my hands on you. It's been years since I felt that mouth. I'm excited. I was disgusted, but I tried to keep calm. We were on the road headed to another state and we planned on stopping at his mother's house. I knew that if his messages were in the sent folder, that meant that he had deleted them. Tim was not planning on being caught and was trying to hide his tracks. He wanted my RV so that he could take his ex around the state and have fun without leaving a credit card trace. I took photos of the emails and sent them to myself in order to preserve the evidence. I then went back to the front of the RV and acted as if everything was fine. I apologized, don't worry, I lied, for how I had acted and suggested that we ask his mom to help us work through this. Tim said that he was sorry and that he accepted my apology. He said he was looking forward to using the RV in the future and that he was glad I had come to see reason. I smiled and nodded but on the inside I was cursing his existence. We made it to his mom's house and I made up an excuse about having to change because my clothes were wrinkled. Tim went inside without me and I started throwing all of his clothes and belongings into a trash bag. I then went inside the house and Tim was sitting with his mom in the kitchen. He asked me what I was doing with the bag and I told him that I was giving him his clothes so that I could leave. Tim then got angry and asked me what the fuck was I doing and his mom was simply confused. She asked me what was going on and I told her, I'm not sure myself. I'm waiting for Tim to explain why he was planning to cheat on me with his ex. Tim's mom then started to cry and yell at Tim while he tried to calm her down. I know Reddit does not have a lot of love for religion, but Tim's mother is a fundamentalist. She had loved me from the minute Tim introduced me to her and it would be an understatement to say that she was very upset with her adulterous son. Tim never tried to apologize to me, instead he chased after his mother saying he was sorry to her. This made her cry harder, because she knew that he wasn't even trying to make amends with me, he was just apologizing to her. 
She hugged me and told me to just go home and she would handle her son. I thanked her and took the RV keys from Tim, this ended up being a minor wrestling match, and left. I drove home crying, but at least I got rid of my asshole ex-husband. Tim called me the next day and begged me to come back to him. He said it was all a mistake, that he was sorry. I asked him why he didn't apologize at his mother's house, why he didn't say he was sorry when I was handing him his bag. I told him that he didn't care about cheating on me, that all he cared about was how bad it made him look to his family. He tried to explain himself, but I cut him off and hung up. I blocked him on all social media and haven't heard anything since. I have gotten a lawyer and have already started the divorce process. Update 2 Our divorce was finalized and settled a long time ago. Our lawyers worked out an agreement outside of the court and we split all assets acquired during the marriage 50-50, which meant I ended up slightly ahead of my personal contributions. I didn't want the mental stress of having to fight my ex in court and simply wanted to be rid him. And yes, I kept the RV after the divorce settlement. Mill and I stayed in touch until her passing last year. She was, someone who loved God and she never truly forgave her son for committing the sin of adultery. Her own husband, F.I.L., had left her for another woman decades ago and she had never moved past it. Seeing her son commit the same sin almost broke her, especially since I had fulfilled what she considered to be my wifely obligations. As for me, I am happily single to this day and am still a writer smile bwahaha this is why I'm still single. I haven't been in a relationship since the divorce unless you count my cat. Based on the timing and the details, I think I may know who this author is. There's this one book she writes that's the story of an author who finds love after divorcing her abusive, asshole husband. The book talks about how she started writing while younger and doesn't pull much for a while until hitting it big. There's just a lot of similarities in both this story and the author's writing style. That is definitely not me, but nice try smile my work is more Pulp Fiction Harlequin romance and borderline smut. I try to avoid topics from real life like divorce because people read my work to escape from the harsh reality of the world. Only happy romance.